Hey everyone, so welcome to my YouTube channel after a long break. Yeah, the truth is I got demotivated to make more videos because I thought my videos are not helping my audience or there are no audience even. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Sad. But then I came across this topic that many people are asking me after knowing about my channel and my Instagram videos. That is, what is BASLP? What is this course? What is audiologist, speech language pathologist and are these all together one person or it's different different courses? So today's video is based on a summary of our course BASLP and what do you mean by audiologist, speech language pathologist, where all we can work and what all we can do. What is the full form of BASLP? Bachelors in Audiology and Speech Language Pathology. The ones who have completed BASLP courses known as audiologist or speech language pathologist or even both. So together we are coined in a term known as ASLP. Now BASLP is a professional medical course that consists of three years of academics and clinical practice and one year of internship and also externship. Now what stream you need in your 11th and 12th is a science stream which consists of physics, chemistry and biology. We have plenty of colleges offering BSLP course but one of the best college which stands out is AISH. AISH is located in Mysore. As you all know, I did my bachelor's in Amrita Institute of Medical Science, Kochi and those were the best times of my life, those four years. And to enter into this course, you have entrance exams of the particular college and also there are management seats and also there will be around two NRI seats. Now regarding the BSLP course, it mainly consists of studying about disorders related to ear, nose, throat, almost close to the ENT field and how to assess these disorders and also how to provide intervention in a therapeutical manner. So these are the main core subjects where you have got audiology, speech language pathology and under audiology you have different ear disorders, outer ear disorders, middle ear disorder, inner ear disorders, vestibular disorders and then how to intervene it by giving hearing aids, cochlear implant, brainstem implants etc. And another core subject is speech language pathology where you will be studying about pediatric speech language disorders like cleft lip and palate, autism disorders, ADHD, uh, child language disorders etc. And also adult disorders such as aphasia, dysarthria, apraxia, after stroke the patient is not able to speak or even swallow. It also includes swallowing disorders of dysphagia. Our curriculum consists mainly of all these core subjects of audiology and speech language pathology but there's a bit of swallowing and vestibular and these are evolving right now in our field. So I guess they'll be revising the curriculum to include more of swallowing and vestibular rehabilitation and techniques. For me when I was in Amrita we had classes from 8.30 to 4.30 as far as I remember and half day we had clinics and half day we would have subject classes. Was it 45 minutes of one hour of a class? I don't remember. My God, my memory. I don't really remember. <laughs> so normally for a BSLP, uh, there are 25 seats. During my Amrita time, we had around 23 people only. And five of them were boys and most of them are girls. So in most of the colleges, it's like that. Most of them will be girls. There will be very few boys. Uh, maximum five, I guess. Oh, by the way, uh, nowadays it's not annual or yearly based curriculum. So you will have six semesters for three years and then there is internship. But yearly or semester wise, it's almost the same. Except for semesters, you might get exams in between a lot. And then we have Viva for each subject. See, during my time, it was different. My time, it was just audiology Viva and speech language Viva. But nowadays, each subject has got Viva separately. Then clinically during speech language pathology, we have to assess the patient's speech. It can be a pediatric case, a teenager or even adults and then uh, also the swallowing status and then we have to provide intervention in therapy manner to them using different different strategies and techniques. And in our field, counseling plays a huge role. Therefore, you need a really good amount of communication in your tongue. Like really you should be able to counsel the patient and make them feel comfortable and satisfied with your counseling. 
Now, apart from these core subjects of audiology and speech language pathology, we have also got anatomy and physiology of the entire body, but more focuses on the head and neck areas. And then we have electronics, statistics, and psychology. Electronics is mainly for hearing aid, the machineries which we use, the equipments, and then statistics is if you are interested in research. And then uh, psychology is mostly for therapy, of course. Then this differs from college, that is we have CC and GC. CC is clinical case study, while GC is journal club. In CC, uh, I think in some places it's in the first year itself. For me, it was in the first year. I had to take a case, I had to study about it and then make a presentation and present in front of the entire audience, entire batchmates or even the uh, seniors and juniors. And JC is journal club where you will have to take a research paper and then present that paper in front of the entire group. You know why I feel so lucky that I have taken BASLP course is that one, it's a professional degree. Obviously, it's going to give a good rank in a good place and a good job. And another is that it doesn't have night duty. Uh, I don't think night duty exists in any of the places for BASLP people. So that's a good thing. You get enough time to spend with your family and friends apart from other medical professionals where you will have to engage a lot in the profession and career. Then another thing is that we don't have to involve a lot into emergency cases and surgeries. So, so the people who are scared of blood, I was scared of blood, uh, seeing the injection needle itself, I'll, you know, not faint, but then I'll freak out. So this was a good course for me. I'm actually thankful for my best friend, Dr. Ananya Shree's mom, that is Dr. Rajeshree, who was working in Muscat. She is the one who recommended this course for me. So regarding the scope of practice, you can work in hospitals, institutions or clinics or even schools and many other places. For a hospital. For a hospital setup, it might differ from places to places. In my hospital where I'm working in Astra Med City, I have to take audiology cases, but uh, vestibular VNG cases are taken more by my senior staffs because they are trained in it. And also a uh, hearing aid trial has got a separate section. So there's another staff who's dealing with it. And then along with audiology cases, I have got speech language cases and also swallowing cases. In hospitals, what I have observed more is we have a lot of swallowing cases. So you have to be well trained in swallowing after your BSc before entering into a hospital setup. Then there are clinics, there are audiology clinics and also speech language clinics. In audiology clinics, it's mostly of audiological tests and also hearing aid trials. Some have got cochlear implants too. And speech and language clinics is mostly of pediatric cases because there will always be a combination of speech therapist, physiotherapist, occupational therapist and behavioral therapist. But there are also clinics and rehabilitation centers that give speech and language therapy along with swallowing therapy to adults and teenage. If you love to teach, you can also work in an academic setup that is an institution or a college. But after BSLP, you can only be a clinical supervisor but if you want to teach subjects you have to take a master's degree too so another thing about academics being a professor or a teacher is you don't have to write the net exam to become a teacher in our college you can just directly come after masters another thing is you can work in schools you can work as a speech language pathologist mostly for uh, children who are disabled or if they need any kind of extra speech therapy in a normal or inclusive schools. Now talking about master's degree, what we used to have was MASLP, that is a fusion of audiology and speech language pathology together. But now it's divided into two, MSc in audiology and MSc in speech language pathology. Both are two years of course. Here you will have four semesters. In the final semester, you will have to do a thesis work that is a research work by yourself. And also there is MSc Deglutology courses which is specialized for swallowing that have started in Amrita since years. Right after you finish your BSLP course and get your degree certificate in your hand, make sure you register in RCI that is Rehabilitation Council of India. Now after your masters, if you still want to continue studying, you can always go for PhD. PhD courses are available in many of the institutions in India overall. So this is an entire summary of our course BSLP and I hope this information helps someone who's ready to join this course. So all the best.